AP Biology, Chapter 40, Animal Structure, Part 1. Animal form and function reflects biology major themes. Animals provide examples of biology themes, including um, the diversity and unity of life, the differences and similarities between living things. Form and function is a big idea in uh, animals, as well as all of life. For example, um, we have the long tongue-like proboscis as a structural adaptation. The structure is related to the function uh, reaching down into the center of the flower to get some nectar. So the relationship of structure, long proboscis, to function, finding that uh, sweet sugary substance in the bottom of flowers. Also, evolution is the thread that ties it all together. Adaptations observed in a comparative study between different living things um, as a result of natural selection to their environments. sugar as waste product you get heat and it is uh, any transformation of energy that you have heat as a waste product and uh, waste product to heat comes yeah from the sugar remember homologous means that it has the same internal structures but not the same necessarily the same function and it does uh, imply a close evolutionary relationship the moss wings are homologous to the butterfly's wings Moss wings are analogous or have the same function but different structures internally. Did I fly? Fox wing? However, a human fawn doesn't do the same thing as a moss wing, so they're not analogous. You could make the argument that the butterfly wing and the moss wings are analogous, do have the same function. The best answer is what? Remember that more internal structures in common shared DNA sequences, closer evolutionary relationship. The correct answer is A. All right, let's go ahead and write this down. There's a hierarchy of structures. Now, if you remember with ecology, we went through um, individuals make up uh, a population, which are the, all the members of the same species. A group of different species in the area, different populations in the area, is called a community. Community with a non-living environment is called the ecosystem large area that has the same temperature and rainfall is called a biome, and then the large area of the planet with life on it, um, which extends up into the air a few hundred feet as well as down into the ground, uh, is called the biosphere. Now we're getting into smaller levels of organization. Don't get levels of organization confused with levels of classification. Levels of classification were obtained in phylum class, order, family, unit, species. We're talking levels of organization, or how living things are organized. Let's go and write this down. Um, the cell is the smallest unit of life and is the lowest level of organization that's considered alive. Cells make up tissues. Let's write this down over here. Tissues are a group of cells with common structure and function. For example, we have muscle tissue, we have connective tissue, nervous tissue. They're all the uh, cells working together to do the same function. In the case of muscle tissue, it's to contract muscles so you can move. A group of tissues makes up an organ, and you should know that as well. So we have different types of organs. We have some things like the stomach, which is composed of smooth muscle tissue, nervous tissue, send signals to let your, uh, from the brain, letting you know you're hungry, let your muscles in the stomach start to contract, make a growling sound. We have another type of connective tissue called blood, and we have epithelium tissue over here. So all these tissues together make up the organ known as the stomach. The only other thing that's missing uh, is organs make up organ systems. So let's go ahead and write that in. Organs, arrow, organ systems right here. And then after organ systems, all of the organ systems combine, the digestive system, circulatory system, nervous system, makes up the organism. So okay, cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems. In the case of the digestive system, they include the small and large intestine, other places. And then um, organ systems make up the organism. Give it a few seconds, copy this. The correct answer is B and C. So the right answer is E, two are correct. All right, you do need to know all this stuff, and let's go and write this down. You can make a table out of it. The four tissue types that animals have are called epithelial, muscle, connective, and nervous. Epi means on top of, and these are the tissues that cover 
the body surfaces and make up things like your skin. So epithelia, skin, mucous membranes, lining of digestive tract. Even your digestive system is exposed to the external environment. When you eat food, you're getting stuff from outside, inside your body. The epithelium lines your intestines and kind of prevents it from getting inside the other places of your body. Stuff should stay in your intestines. Muscles, uh, they're used for movement. The ones that you're familiar with uh, typically are skeletal muscles. They are muscles attached to skeleton. We have cardiac muscle, only found in one place, the heart, and smooth muscle which is found in places like your intestines and stomach to push the food along. Connective tissue includes, um, it kind of connects things together. Bone, that's in a bone cartilage and uh, other fibers are fairly straightforward. However, blood is also a type of connective tissue. And the reason why we considered it a connective tissue is it connects the lungs to your, you know, your toes via the, the blood that carries things like oxygen and glucose and other things in your body. And then the last type of tissue is nervous system, or nervous tissue. Nervous tissue uh, is made up of mainly one type of cell, make sure you have that down, neurons. That's the primary cell of the nervous system. And this is for taking in information from the environment, integration, and then doing something about it, responding to that environment. If there's a fire, you have to recognize there's a fire there to begin with. Uh, you feel the heat, you see the flames, and then you respond to it by sending signals down to your legs to run away. All your cells start off as a generalized type of cell called a stem cell. And stem cells can become any type of cell in your body. This is true. Remember, somatic cells are body cells. This is also true. Remember, all the cells in your body are clones of each other from that fertilized egg. All right. So here's some additional information about uh, epithelial tissue. We have... Um, don't have to write this down. However, you should know this. Protection of internal environment against external environment. So basically it's a barrier between the external and the internal environment. Now there's a variety of different types of uh, epithelial tissue. Let's go through it really quickly. Uh, this is only if you're looking for a five on the AP exam. Columnar means there are columns. So here we have columns, columns, columns. And if it's stratified, that means there's layers. So stratified means layers. And columnar just means columns of cell. Simple means it's not layered. So it's either stratified in layers or simple, only one layer. Pseudostratified makes it look like layers, but they're not actually layered. Pseudo means false. Squamous means flat. So stratified squamous epithelial are layers of flat cells, which is mainly what you find in your skin. Then we have simple squamous epithelium. This is a very thin single layer of squamous cells lining of your lungs. And then we have another type called cuboidal epithelium where it's a real cubes. I'm not going to test you on stratified versus simple, but I would like to give you an explanation in case you see that on the AP exam. Here's some more pictures of epithelium. Simple columnar, you see the columns there, you see the little nuclei inside. Pseudostratified, you really can't tell distinct layers. Cuboidal, that's your cubes. Simple columnar ciliated little cilia here, sweeping up things like bacteria that get caught in your throat. And uh, you sweep it back up into your, your mouth, and then you swallow the bacteria into your stomach, and then you're digested. This is true. We'll talk about the immune system coming up. All right, muscle tissue. You should know the three types of muscle tissue. And you have to know some uh, information about how to identify each type. The three types are skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. All right, uh, you do want to uh, write some of this information down here. Yeah. So for uh, card or skeletal muscle, the first thing you should know is that it connects uh, to the bone. That's why it's called skeletal. It's used primarily for movement, and it's striated. Take a look here. See all those little bands? These bands are called striations, and you should know that skeletal muscle has striations. The only other type of muscle that has striations are these little bands is cardiac muscle. If I give you a test question asking which one does not have striations, that would be smooth muscle. Let's write that down. Skeletal and cardiac are both striated, or bands. Bands, right in there. All right. The second thing you should know is that skeletal muscle is unbranched. It is, there's no branching involved. 
so striated and unbranched. Cardiac is striated and branched, because I'm write that in. And then smooth is unstriated and unbranched. And those are the ways to tell the difference between the three. Smooth lines things like your intestines, cardiac is your heart, skeletal is pretty much everything else. And here we have some more examples. Here are some skeletal muscles. You see the bands there, striations. Here we have heart muscles. And again, you can see the striations, but these are branched. And then we have the involuntary, which means you don't have control over them. By the way, you don't have control over your heart or your smooth muscles, but you do have control over your uh, skeletal muscles. So that's another thing that you should know. Involuntary muscles, no control. You can't push your food through your intestines faster if you want to. You can make your heart beat faster, but indirectly by, you know, watching a scary movie or something. And as you can see with the smooth muscle, there's no little bands here. And this is what's lining the uterus as well as the uh, intestines and stomach. That would be smooth. All right, nervous tissue. You're going to take in stimuli and respond to stimuli. And you should know the two functions of nervous tissue. The types, neurons, brain, spinal cord. You can write that down. All right, connective tissue, supports and binding, holding things together. Blood also connects uh, different parts of the body, kind of the transportation system. Storing fats in something called adipose tissue. This is what uh, fat looks like under a microscope. The storage area, think of it as like closets of uh, energy. And also filling space, mesentery and other connective tissue kind of fills in space. So let's go and write this down. And uh, let's go through this one at a time. Loose connective tissue is kind of filler. Cartilage is what your nose and ears are made out of. Cartilage eventually becomes bone uh, in newborns. They start to uh, turn the cartilage into bone using enzymes. Adipose, once again, is fat. Blood has different types of cells we'll talk about in a future class. Bones have little cells called osteocytes inside of them that secrete calcium that uh, form the bony matrix that forms your bones. That's a connective tissue. And then we have fibrous connective tissue, things like tendons and ligaments. Remember that tendons, muscles get tender, muscle to bone, tendon, and then ligaments are bone to bone, and they're both a type of fibrous connective tissue. All right, let's move on. Adipose, fat cells, cartilage, ears and nose. Sharks, the chondria ichthys uh, is a uh, type of fish with uh, cartilage skeleton. Sharks. Connective, uh, loose connective tissue, kind of like filler, and then fibrous connective tissue make up things like your uh, tendons and ligaments. Cartilage and bone are rigid connective tissues, structural proteins deposited in a matrix or an area between the cells. Bone is, of course, stronger. The strength comes from calcium salts. Cartilage is softer and forms the embryonic skeleton of uh, things like uh, us and the adult skeleton of sharks and whales. In a human body, uh, the cartilage, of course, makes up your ears, hips, and nose, and then joints. Uh, here we have a complete uh, setup of the levels organization. Cells make up tissues. Tissue makes up, makes up organs. Organs make up organ systems. And organ systems make up the organism. Now we're going to go through each one of these in turn. Uh, just go and read through them for right now. But uh, the coming ch chapters will go into details on each one of these. All right, homeostasis. Systems work to maintain an internal stable en environment. Here we have um, a generalized diagram of a um, organism. This is not an actual animal. As you can see, we have the food coming in through the intestines. The food is uh, going to be digested and nutrients absorbed into the circulatory system. The heart pumps the circulatory fluid around, blood. You pick up oxygen at the respiratory system and drop off carbon dioxide, which kind of shows that relationship. Then at the cells, we have this fluid surrounding the cells called interstitial fluid. Remember, all life occurs in water. And we have an exchange, usually by diffusion, but it could be also active transport of materials between all the cells in the body, not just over here. Then waste products are removed from the blood and exit into the excretory system, which eventually leaves the body. This is number one in animals, and this is number two in animals. So this is how everything's kind of connected. Now here we have the Remember, negative feedback is where whatever is being produced reverses an effect. Positive feedback is whatever is being produced increases an effect. If you turn up a, um, 
if the uh, temperature gets too hot, theater turns off, reversing effect, no heat produced, room temperature decreases, and we're back at our uh, uh, stable temperature. If the temperature in the room is too cold, we turn on the heater, heat is produced, room temperature increases until it um, gets hot enough, and then it turns off once it reaches a set point. So this is negative feedback for a house. And we kind of do the same thing when we get cold. Think about, um, think about what happens when you get cold. Decreased body temperature sends a signal to the brain. Blood vessels constrict to conserve body heat. Skeletal muscles shiver to increase body temperature by breaking down more glucose. Body temperature increases. Here we have increased body temperature. Thermostat in the brain recognizes it. When you sweat, evaporative cooling cools you down. Increased dilation of your blood vessels also increases the uh, surface area to release body heat. You uh, cool down and your body temperature is maintained. Again, this is a great example of negative feedback. This ends part, um, part one on your notes on chapter 40.